Have you ever wanted to leave your secure job and start an entrepreneurship journey? Start something of your own and make it a brand? Then, this video is completely for you. So today, we are going to have Samarth Kholkar, the CEO and co-founder of BeLive. What is BeLive and about him, we are going to know in this podcast. So, let's get this video started. First of all, let me say you about the company. The company name is BeLive, started in the hometown of Samad Kholkar. He worked for IBM for more than 10 years and co-founded this company with Sandeep Mukherjee. They both got along and started this entrepreneurship journey. While Sandeep had worked previously in his career with many companies, including Nokia, Microsoft and Saab Miller. We will have an interview with Sandeep in our upcoming videos. So, today in this video, we will be having Samarth Kholkar. We will be going to ask him the questions about his journey. How was it like to leave something which was very secured and start an entrepreneurship journey in a complete different style and a different manner. Because the company offers guided 3 year long electric bicycle e-bike tours allowing tourists to connect with the local culture without generating a significant carbon footprint. BeLive also retails e-bikes, electric scooters through a dedicated online store. They have bought the future to the present. It's what Samad Kholkar says that the electric vehicles are in the future. They are the present. So now let's meet him and have a conversation with him and let's get to know him. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. So let's start with the interview, Samad. So as you, as we all know, you had a secure job with IBM. What was the feeling when you came out of your comfort zone and started doing something new, completely different way, which was never done before? How was that? I think uh, corporate life, people may, might you know talk very differently about it, but uh, I feel corporate life also has its you know positives in terms of grooming and you know guiding the person and. The experience which comes out of, you know, working in a structured environment is something, you know, which is very exceptional. Yes. And that was the same for me that uh, I didn't look at it as, uh, oh, you know, the Eureka moment, so to say, that uh, now I should become a startup entrepreneur or something of that sort. I think the whole idea was to do something which gives you satisfaction. And, you know, you can get a satisfaction working with the organization also, or you can get satisfaction, you know, being on your own as well. So I, I, I don't really classify it saying that, you know, it's, uh, you know, working in uh, a corporate world as uh, source trainers or anything of that sort. I think it's the same everywhere. I think it's your will to work. And for me, it was the same thing that, uh, you know, when I had to take a decision that I have to move out of my corporate life and uh, pursue something which I believed in, uh, it was not too tough a decision. So okay. it actually came to a point where you said that, okay, uh, you know, you kind of do a little bit of a SWOT analysis of the situation. Uh, more than SWOT analysis, I think the risk analysis is the most, uh, you know, appropriate one. Yes. And then we saw that, you know, that from a category point of view, there was a lot of action which was happening in the EV space. And this I'm talking about early 2000, late 2017, when the ideation actually started and, you know, uh, early 2018. Uh, awareness was low, so you know people really didn't know the way today. You know you are seeing new launches happening literally on a monthly basis, right? Yeah, so you didn't yeah, have that. yeah, you didn't have that kind earlier. Nice, nice, someone. So, what was the first milestone? Milestone be like achieved that gave you a boost. I think the first milestone was uh, you know what we identified ourselves was that we have to give consumers a easy way to own an EV, right? And before you start, uh, let's say, you know, selling something, the customer first has to be aware what, what is the product, what is the category. Correct. And that was when we started our journey in 2018 with that same thought in mind. Hmm. That we said that let us give first people uh, an experience of EVs. So when we started our EV tourism, which was the first initiative of its kind in India, our whole idea was that let people try out, you know, let them go on these tours that we have curated and let them try out all these two-wheeler EVs that we have. Yes. Ultimately, what we expected was actually what happened, that people, when they came back out, out of their tour, they said, hey, this EV was damn cool, where can I buy it? Yes, right? that's the next step. So for that to begin, you know, we had to go back and understand where the consumer will be much more easier to access. And at the same time, much more easier for us to you know give that uh, consumer that experience. 
and that we found through tourism. So from that point of view, I think the first milestone was that we signed a 20-year exclusive contract with Goa Tourism, okay, okay. Uh, to be their official EV tourism partner. And I think that is one of the most significant things. And uh, you know, Goa Tourism Development Corporation till date have been extremely supportive, and you know, we have built a relationship. And very proud to say that even from a pure uh, tourism experience point, you know, we are ranked number one on TripAdvisor. I think that we are very, very, you know, happy about. But when you look at milestones, I think the first customer is always a big milestone. Yes. And the 100th customer, the 50th customer, all these are milestones that we celebrate with the team. Yes. So for a startup, there are many milestones, but, yes. you know, probably if you talk about, talk about it from, you know, how we approach the market, I think, the sign up with the Goa Tourism uh, Department was one of the most significant ones. Significant yeah, great, great. That was great. So, what was a major challenge did you face when starting in tourism industry? But you were starting with a twist of introducing electric vehicles. So, how was that during that phase? So, I think there is no industry which is you know easy to manage. Right? There yes. are challenges in every. I mean, even if you do something in education, you can understand. Right? There are so yes. many challenges which can come over there also. So for a startup, I think every day is, is a challenging one. And, you know, we have always looked at it as, you know, what is the goal that we're chasing or what is the next milestone that we're chasing? Yes. For us, that is something which is very, very critical and very, very key. And that is how we look at it. So it's it's always, uh, you know, easy to say that, hey, you know, these difficulties exist, these challenges exist. But if you don't rise above those, then, you know, somewhere your intent or your goal is not very clear. And for us, it was very clear that we have we were on a mission to make EVs accessible to consumers. And that is what we are working on even today. Okay. That's great. That's great. And yeah, congratulations on the Experience Center of Hyderabad. That was a great place. I just visited that. It was very good. And what is the need of having experience centers in India? And how, how are you relating that with your tourism industry business? So, as I mentioned, tourism was just one part of, you know, introducing EVs to the yes. consumers, mm. right? The way we want to be looked at or the way we are approaching the entire uh, you know, industry or the ecosystem is that we are trying to showcase the best of EVs in the best particular manner. So, if you go to our online store, okay, which is a digital platform, you will get choice. You will get EV experts, okay, who will guide you through this journey. And what the consumer, Indian consumer especially looks at is the ease of ownership. Yes. So we have, you know, tires where you can get your old uh, petrol scooter and upgrade it to an electric one. Okay. Yeah. We have subscription options. We have lease options. We have finance option. We have 0% EMI. Mm -hmm. And just to our online uh, platform, in the last year or so, we have sold, I mean, we have delivered to customers in over 50 cities in India. Great, just through online. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But what we also realize is that, you know, an Indian consumer, especially in new category, wants to have a touch and feel of yeah. a product, True. right? True. So what the experience center does is, first of all, it breaks the clutter of your typical auto dealership, yes. right? Yes. So you would have seen the store. It's done in a you know, yeah. very cool manner, you know, very fancy. And, yeah, you know, exactly. yeah. in terms of, you know, you don't feel that you walked into an auto show. Yes. Right? Correct. So that is that is what we wanted to do. And, you know, we are introducing many more digital aspects, even in the offline store. So very soon you will be able to, you know, kind of choose colors and products and everything. But yeah. at the same time, what it also does, is if you want to take a test drive, you know, you have an experience center where there are, you know, probably about eight to 10 different brands and yes. you can try them out. Once you've got the confidence of, you know, saying, oh, hey, you know, this product looks good. Uh, the category is, you know, something which I can manage. And we sell everything, right? You would have yes. seen the charging. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the charging. charging system, yes. Right? So those charges also. So we yeah. are providing the entire solution. So we don't want to be, you know, just a typical dealer kind of mm -hmm. a company. But we are trying to give consumers an ease of buying an EV. And that is the reason of, you know, setting up these experience centers. In fact, our second one is coming up again in Hyderabad. Oh, There's wow. one coming up in Hubli. There's one coming up in Goa. So, you know, multiple mm -hmm. such and Bangalore also. Obviously. Yeah. So, so many places that we have already lined up and 
you know, we are flooded with uh, inquiries from various people yes. that you know, we want to be part of EV re- revolution, but we want to be part of EV revolution with you guys, you know, with PLA. So that's a great, uh, you know, comfort for us and great support that the entire, uh, you know, audience that we were appealing to is giving us back. Nice. That's really great because there are multiple branded vehicles at under one store. So anyone like want to be a part of that franchise and be a part of that revolution. So yeah. congratulations and great start for that. Uh, so what at what point would you think that BeLive had attained its full, uh, fulfilled the purpose of setting it? I think, uh, you know, it's a journey, right? Journey, yeah. Uh, journey. In journey, I don't think the destination is more important. But, you know, the entire milestones that you cover, I mean, who would have thought that a company based out of Goa, uh, you know, today operates experiences in almost nine states across India. Yes. Right? Similarly, you know, as I said, our roadmap is to have 100 experience centers across India in the next, you know, almost two years. Nice. Right. So that's a very, that's a very aggressive part. But when we, and, you know, the kind of people, people who have been, Wanting to the, the first question that you asked, right? Yes. People have been wanting to be entrepreneurs, but they want to, you know, be associated with a brand which yes. believes in you know the core ethos and everything. I think we are finding that kind of a balance and we are finding that kind of vibe within them. And yes. you know, we are happy to partner and you know take this journey with like-minded folks. Yes. So I think that is that is very, very unique. And this is a beautiful category, right? And right now. While we are, you know, uh, expanding on our uh, uh, experience centers as well as making the online store much, much more stronger, the digital platform, the footprint is becoming stronger by the day for us, right? Yes. We are also entrenched deeply into selling to enterprise uh, customers, right? We are yes. selling to logistic companies, we are yes. selling to hospitality companies, we are selling to educational institutes, we are selling to large real estate uh, companies who yes. have these housing complexes or corporate parks, we are telling them, we'll set up the entire charging infrastructure for you. So we are ensuring that, you know, the entire uh, ecosystem or the entire journey of any consumer, we are there for that uh, particular individual or that corporate entity to give them the right amount of support and right amount of, you know, uh, help or uh, the solution, most importantly, which will make electric mobility a reality in India. Yes, it's no more the future, it's the present. It's the present. Correct, correct. So, yeah. So, uh, if, if, if I ask the journey of three years, what were the mistakes you made and how, how what did you learn from those mistakes? So, you know, some, somewhere I had read this, that uh, in business, uh, you know, you either win or you learn. Yes. Right? So, you never lose anything or you don't make a mistake. I think these are all learnings. That's, that's first of all, the way we approach it uh, at BeLive. Mm-hmm. And that is the culture in the organization also. So nobody is reprimanded for failure, but people are, uh, you know, what do you say, held accountable in terms of the decisions that they make. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's never that, you know, something which is uh, cumulatively coming on an individual, uh, but it is always something that we look at it, even success is celebrated uh, together as well as any sort of, you know, uh, uh, little bit of misses here yes, and there yeah. is also taken as a team effort, even in that form, right? Yeah. So I think mistakes are something that, you know, every entrepreneur makes, okay, from that point of view. Because especially if you are trying to build something very unique, yes. right? And something in a category which is evolving. Okay. I've never done before. That, that always will have some pitfalls here and there. Okay. And we went through that. And I think the ability to, you know, stand after having a little fall is what makes, uh, you know, every enterprise successful. Correct. And I think we love falling because when we rise, we rise taller. Yes. Right? So, and uh, COVID has taught us that. Like when the first wave hit us, we were actually a pure EV tourism company. And you can imagine, right? All travel stopped, uh, you know, everything stopped. Yeah. Everything stopped. But that gave us the time and the thinking power to go more aggressively on the EV digital store. True. Right? Yes. So the BeLive digital store essentially came about to its pure form during the first uh, pandemic. Right? Mm-hmm. And that is how you make 
you know every uh, such pitfall into an opportunity and we are so happy because we could actually come out of our daily operational rut yes. and actually put some thinking around you know what we wanted to achieve as an organization yes and no regrets ever and happy to be where we are and as i said it's a journey not a destination very good when well, that's like that's amazing because you took up uh, like the pandemic was hitting very badly you took the opportunity and made out something very like way productive out of that that's very really great yeah so what was the toughest decision you made which completely was worth taking that risk i think uh, as you mentioned in the first question itself right leaving something which is very very secure yeah, as yeah. Uh, you know i didn't start off as young as you right yeah. i started off almost after uh, 14 15 years of corporate life so you can imagine right so the decision becomes tougher as every year passes okay yes. because you have your responsibilities you have your other factors also you know uh, kind of looming on you yeah. but i think that decision was a tough one i would not like to act too brave on that <laughs> but uh, you know as they say you know when when you jump out of the aircraft you don't think whether uh, you know the air, uh, the parachute will open or you land in the water or whatever you just jump yes. right and then you know you glide your journey and i think that is that is how it is that uh, you know it was a tough decision but you know happy be sitting where i am today and uh, being part of this amazing ev revolution which is taking place in india great great that was like 100% worth taking that risk so uh, as i have seen in one of your interview like previous interview you have mentioned that you watch a lot of bollywood movies you watch a lot of movies so yeah. which actor or actress or movie you take as an inspiration for your uh, entrepreneurship journey i think you know i have various references from various movies right yeah like uh, i don't know whether you watched this uh, uh, hilarious movie called anda sapna yeah yeah i have seen that okay so in that there is a very interesting character called crime master gogo yes okay played by you know the very funny shakti kapoor yes okay sir. so he has a line in that ki aaya hu to kuch to lutke jaunga right so i use that you know very repeatedly when i talk to my you know sales team members saying that you know you have gone all the way you have put in so, so much of effort okay yes. ensure that you know you bring back something with you you know it may not always be a sale but at least build a strong relationship okay communicate the right message to the you know customer okay right. and especially in enterprises you understand right the large enterprise you need to make them believe that you are the right solution provider right yes. but don't come back empty handed that you know i just met the person who came right yes. come back with something which which you would be proud of and you know which will add value to be like so right. that is something which i always say that you know i am to push to loot ke jaunga nice guys that's really great <laughs> wonderful so what is the future vision of the company future vision for be life i think the future as we say is here but uh, present yeah <laughs> we, we would want to be placed in a very a unique zone at all points of time we don't want to follow a me too kind of routine and the way we are looking at it is you know we want to build an ecosystem okay which will actually help the consumers end to end right yes. through their entire life cycle as a ev user yes. so whether it is you know enhancing the part where we uh, showcase discovery of electric vehicles which is currently happening through happening. Our, as well as our digital platform and experience centers yes or it is you know the post sales right how do we keep the engagement going so that the consumer always gets the right inputs from be life okay it yeah. could be that you know okay you're not using your ev in the best particular manner you know and these are some of the things that you could do okay yes. or you know it's time for you to do an upgrade right yes. so we want to develop that strong digital platform so that we are able to you know ensure that the consumers come on it not just when they are purchasing something but even after they have purchased maybe from another dealer somewhere yes right? so we want to build that ecosystem right okay. and our strength has been partnerships right so right from ether to hero hero electric to ampere to just about kinetic all these top brands in the country okay right. yeah. partnerships in some form or the other right mm-hmm. so they there is a good amount of trust which sits within us right the mutual trust and that is something that we would want to safeguard 
and always offer their consumers who are also our consumers something which is unique and at the end of the day provides that value yes. it could be to uh, during the uh, you know the pre sales during sales or post sales post sales major important is post sales because many people are facing problem after owning an ev they are right. like, we we can't find a dealer or we can't find a mechanic who can help us with small small they, they are all minor problems but they don't know how to clear that so yeah. in this way we uh, dealers like uh, ev stores like uh, be live they play a part an important role absolutely and i think you know uh, i honestly don't look at it like a conflicting or a competing kind of a environment i mean look at it right uh, we as a country sell about 2 2.5 crore two wheelers on a yearly basis right yes. and the electric two wheelers are you know somewhere around 2 lakhs True. okay now even if the entire ecosystem you know doubles up yes. still there will be a massive gap which exists yeah. yes and the only way that you know we can move ahead is through partnerships and collaborations true yes right so uh, as you have mentioned partnership and collab so like what's the process if someone has to approach and uh, what are the steps they should see like they should have, uh, they should pre existly own a land or they should own a shop before but what's the process for us like so so we have, we have kept the there is a criteria okay hmm. that we have set okay uh, the one of the most critical part which first comes is the passion okay? yes because there are a lot of people the way you mentioned right that i have got this real estate mm-hmm. i want to set up a tv store right but we do not look at it from you know a pure uh, commercial sense from that point of view because at the end of the day it's not that you know it's like a uh, you know cloth shop where you put up the clothes and they get uh, you can start selling them from the next day right yes. i mean it, it's not easy mm-hmm. so you would want somebody who understands cvs has the same amount of passion and is able to carry see at the end of the day whoever takes you know our experience we call them store partners yes. okay whoever becomes our store partners we would want them to be a, with us in the longer journey not in just the short journey yes right sir. so they should have the right amount of passion and intent they should have you know understanding of business okay yes. that you know this is how the business evolves and it's not that you know i open the shutter and on day one i turn you know a profitable right yes. so there are investment which need to be made and at the same time you know we carry certain you would have seen the way we have you know designed the store also yeah i've seen yeah and the so yeah, yeah certain aesthetics which we uh, you know do uh, go along with there's a lot of standardization that we do there's a lot of digital input which will come so the person who comes in should be able to handle all that Love you know money is one aspect of it yes. right the investment which is to be made but after all that is made right i mean you know that a lot of people have the best uh, the, uh, the most amount in their yes. bank but are they able to create let's say the best hotel in the world no yeah. right yeah. it is it is the people and the processes and everything so that is what we are aiming for i mean today we could have probably you know just thrown our uh, 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 store partnerships to every person who comes by right True. just to show that i have opened hundreds to hundreds that is not the idea we want every partner partnership to be unique every partnership to be you know uh, we want to handhold that uh, partner and ensure that it's a joint success at True. the end of the day as i said you know it's a collaboration of different right. partners but we want to ensure that there is a joint success great great like yeah many people like many enthusiasts around there waiting they will be waiting for this kind of opportunity which they can so whoever is, just to just to add whoever is keen uh, they can visit our online store hmm. and uh, there's a tab which says you know uh, become a store partner so you can just click on that there's a simple form and then there's a team which we have set up which yes. will reach out and you know go through the entire uh, process so it's very yes. simple and we don't keep people you know hanging so much <laughs> that's great that's great so uh asking about this can you name a person who's been tremendous impact in your life like who's been a motivation source to you like you were coming out of a secure job from as you mentioned 13 years 13 years is a very long term having a mindset like okay i work this month i get a salary who was that per- when you were coming out who was that person to give you a motivation and boost like okay no amarth you can do like that like it's it's okay like that i think uh, to put it on one person will be uh, it's hard yeah it's hard it's 
But I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, I always say there are friends, family and fools who support you in everything, right? Yes. So <laughs> I had a good mix of all. <laughs> and uh, my co-founder itself, Sandeep, is yes, the friend of over 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. So I am sure that, you know, that when I'm doing this, I have my, you know, the best interest taken care of, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, everybody has been extremely supportive and, you know, somewhere, I think that belief uh, uh, was there and it translated. Uh, there are, as I said, you know, there are always highs and lows, but uh, there is this entire close group of people who essentially push and prod you and, you know, uh, having had a long corporate career also, you made a lot of mentors and guides sure. and, you know, fair judges of your actions, so to say, okay. who are able to give you the right inputs and insights. So it's it's a mixed bag, you know, at every point, there's a different person or a different individual who kind of contributes in a very different way. Yes. Right? You had many of those and we keep seeking out Uh, We have a team of advisors also coming from various sets of industry who have been very, very, you know, strong in terms of advising us at the same time, you know, uh, putting us back on track whenever we kind of, you know, go a little under. And that's very important for a startup to, you know, be. Otherwise, complacency can set in and, you know, you can probably make a mistake, as you said. Yes, correct. And that's correct. That's correct. So, uh, what advice would you give for people who are like who are planning to go do a startup? They have a product, or they are building the product, or in a prototype stage, prototype stage, and all. What what advice would you give them? I think there is a lot of uh, you know positivity about uh, entrepreneurship right now. Yes. Okay. And I think there are a lot of uh, even traditional houses, business houses, which are coming out to support also. So it's a great environment. My only word of caution would be that many a times we see something being successful and we peg ourselves to that, right, very quickly. And which is not a bad thing. But at the same time, we have to be very clear that what is it that we are actually offering, right? I mean, is is our product or service actually fulfilling a gap in the market? Okay. Or improving something that that already exists, Okay. So, and will this be something which will be easy to replicate and scale up as we need it? Yes. So, I think that these are some of the things that, you know, we have to take care of. And I would say that, uh, you know, a lot of procrastination kills a lot of good ideas also. Yes, true. Right? So, somewhere you have to take a call that, yes, entrepreneurship is the way forward for me or a corporate career, at least at this point of time, is the right thing to do. So I don't think there is a right and wrong about either. And I would genuinely, uh, you know, uh, encourage people that if they have a good idea, they which, we, which they feel that, you know, can not just change the world, so to say, but, you know, create a positive yeah. impact. Yeah. Right? No, yeah. I think that is something that I would definitely encourage people to go after and, you know, uh, pursue their, uh, you know, uh, vision vision yeah so yeah so as you mentioned like w- what is the major gap in ev industry in india like what are the problems facing like is it the having the right products as we say like the magnets for the motor magnets as we say uh, we need to export them is that a problem or maybe uh, if you say the lithium batteries lithium batteries need to be exported so what was the problem in ev industry right now in, in according to you in the market I think more than calling them problems, I think there are some gaps. Which gaps, yeah, gaps yeah. And essentially, I would say because it's a it's a, a nascent category still, okay, uh, I think we are going to see a lot of things changing in the next uh, probably 12 months or so. Okay. And it comes in two or three layers, which is, you know, the public policy plus uh, availability at the same time, you know, is the chicken and egg story, which we keep hearing about, yes. right? And which is around, centered around the infrastructure. Success. But I think India is a hotbed of innovation. True. And what we have been looking in the last two, three years is a typical replication of what has happened in an international country, right? In yeah. some other country to happen in India. But yeah. I don't think that is that is the right way of looking at it. Because India has its own way mm-hmm. of, you know, finding the right uh, solution or finding the right fix, okay? Yeah. I'll give you an example. If you look at the low-speed scooters which are being sold, the maximum consumption today is in the logistics uh, uh, industry. Yes. Right? Who would have thought of that? 
no but that is where you know the entire segment has revolutionized right yeah. and that is that is what i'm saying that today as you say you know there are so many companies which i know who basically are you know getting products shipped from another country just uh, kind of you know assembling it in india and selling yeah. it yes right and that is also going to change because we are going to see that you know once the sale part is over the service will become very critical yes right and that is where you know a lot of consolidation will happen so probably we will have obviously the bigger brands are yet to enter the market you know yeah. they are under that, that is going to happen so that's something that you know is going to change and there will be a certain order which will come into place right so we are going through the same where everybody is trying to find their right spot yes. so that might take 12 months or it might take 24 months okay when but it will come yeah but all all i would say is it is in the right direction exactly. so we have to look at it from that point of view that yes we are moving towards you know those goals that we have set in terms of transitioning to electric mobility Great, great. Someone that was like correct. So, what do you suggest the youth right now? Uh, like who is struggling to uh, take from an electric vehicle or a petrol vehicle or diesel or whatsoever IC engine vehicle? What do you say them? Like which one they should choose right now, according to you? I think the youth of today are much more conscious also. So, it's while the petrol prices are a deterrent for uh, you know owning a two wheeler. Yeah. I think the other thing which a lot of consumers that we sell to are saying that. You know, Uh, i want to have a zero carbon footprint kind of a lifestyle right so in from that point of view at least owning an electric vehicle somewhere you know gives you that positive uh, feeling right so oh, yes. and, you know at the end of the day you know as we say in business also the unit economics matter yes right? so from that point of view if you see that uh, owning a two wheeler and going to college right uh, Will sound much more convenient and add more money to your wallet. Yes. Okay, whether it's the online wallet or the offline wallet. Correct. Okay. If you own an electric uh, vehicle, so it is as simple as that, right? Yes. And now with shared mobility coming and within shared mobility also electric getting you know more yes. popularity. I yes. think it's it's a no brainer to switch to electric. Great, great. So, uh, what do you think? Can in in future can we see the partners like Ola, Uber, uh, using electric vehicles for their uh, pickup, drop-ups, or uh, logistic partners like Swiggy, Zomato? I think people like Zomato have already put a yes. charter together to move to complete electric by twenty twenty thirty. Right. Uh, we see Blue Smart, which is uh, you know growing leaps and bounds in the same space as Uber and Ola. Okay? Yes. and transforming uh, you know uh, mobility in the in the uh, in the four wheeler space yes right? so that's something that we are seeing already so and as i said you know the category is so uh, nice. small there is place for everyone to you know find their own spot so it's it's matter of time and we are seeing the auto giants across the globe making those statements that we will turn all electric yes. in the next 10 years or 15 years and we are seeing the number of uh, you know launches also which are happening so you can sense it in the entire ecosystem that the change is here it's here yes it's no where the future it's the present and it's compulsory so yeah samar so thank you so much for joining us today and giving your valuable time with us and these questions and the answers which which were there it will be helpful for a lot of people out there the young budding entrepreneurs the students like me and who wants to start something out of their comfort zone it will be boost for them thank you so much for joining us today pleasure is mine take care all the best to you guys so you saw the man himself the samad kolkar so he's a very down to earth person he gave us a time to interact with us thank you so much for giving your time samad and i hope you like this video in an upcoming videos we are going to get more and more number of ceos related to the electric vehicle field e waste everything related to all the renewable energies also because i want you to know what is it like to start something new and know this electric vehicles are in the future they are the present so subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification on so that whenever we post a new video you will be updated in this channel you will have everything related to electric vehicles so this is going to be the one channel about electric vehicles which has everything in it so don't forget to subscribe and see ya